Mirror, mirror twin? Mirror twin. Is that more than identical? It's it's identical, but they're flipped. Uh, flipped. Yeah, if you're one's right-handed, one's left-handed, one's. Oh wow. Yeah. Or Siamese twin, or a chimera is like a Siamese twin realized as one person. Your powers combine. So you could have two sets of DNA. So like, there's been instances where people have like almost lost their kids because their their DNA didn't match up. You know. Prosecutor started an investigation, and Lydia found herself in front of a judge. The judge looked at me and he says, uh, are these your children? I said, yes, they are. I, you know, I, carry, I got pregnant, I carried them, I delivered them. The doctor has ultrasounds of them being in my stomach. The chimera theory was confirmed. Incredibly, Lydia had two sets of DNA. DNA in Lydia's ovaries was completely different from the DNA found in the rest of her body. Lydia's children had inherited their DNA from the non-identical twin that Lydia's embryo fused with just after Lydia was conceived. Yeah. They like, they would, because they would take blood everywhere. She was a twin, but she had absorbed. She had absorbed the other twin. You have a hermaphrodite, you know? I think that's an instance of a chimera where you're screwed up. It's undifferentiated sex, but if you're, right. but if it's you fuse together as a, two men or two women, then it does. It seems you seem fine, but you have two sets of DNA. I read an article this week. I don't know if you keep up with the technology that you were part of. A man was cured of leukemia. Yeah. And AIDS. AIDS through a bone marrow transplant. Yeah. When this week. Really? Not yeah, well, week. not this week. Well, they, three years ago. You but now they, they, they validated it. And so this man has or had cancer and HIV. And what they did is they needed to give him a stem cell transplant for the cancer. And so they gave him chemo and radiation to wipe out his immune system. He had found a donor to basically give him an immune system. But what and they the did was they took the stem cells from the donor and gave it to the patient. Not only is he cancer free, which is, but he is also HIV free. They this donor is one of the very, very few people who is resistant to HIV. So that's that, and they sought out a donor like that on purpose because the patient had HIV. Oh. The hospital that that uh, is also a research facility that that did my transplant. They were experimenting experiment with that. With you know, it. My transplant was done in '97. They won the Nobel Peace Prize for research medicine in '96. Then Saint, I don't know if they had anything to do with it. Yeah. St. Jude's. Yeah. So go donate to St. Jude's. Yeah, yeah. That way awesome. you can see badass movies. Yeah. Everything doesn't happen for a reason. But everything is caused by a reason. I can roll with that. The world is yeah. empty and meaningless. <laughs> the world is empty and meaningless. No, yeah, yeah over to me. <laughs> over to me! I'm talking. More! <laughs> Fuck! Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so science. Yes. <laughs> uh, you need some learning? I do. So this is Christopher Roosevelt. He's our guest. And we're talking today about Jurassic Park, essentially. Jurassic it's, Park, yes. It's happening. Jurassic Park Jack is Horner. happening. He's given a, an idea of how you could go about it. I mean, that's kind of what Ted talks all about. It's like, okay, I got an idea. I think it's plausible. Give me some fucking money. That's true. But the thing, but that, the thing he, he says that isn't possible is like taking the DNA right out of it, the dinosaur. But there's a whole other way of going. Yeah, about going it. about it. You may, you might not really be making a dinosaur. You'd be making like a quasi dinosaur because you're like, well, that dinosaur has, you know, the skeletal structure looks like this. Let's, if we make it, you know, if we take this gene and do that thing, it, you know, because like the the pigeon, was it the pigeon. It was a pigeon, yeah. Looked very much. We don't know if it's exactly the same DNA that would be inherent in the velociraptor, but it looks so, the same. So what you're saying is that just because it looks the same, it doesn't have the same exact DNA makeup. Yeah, um, there's like the phenotype, it's like the way something looks. I could clone myself and then turn on all the genes that would make me kind of look like you. Mm -hmm. And so superficially, maybe I look like you, but to say that it's a one-to-one -one relationship... Not true. An egg gets inseminated and it turns into a zygote and then it becomes a... It goes through the evolutionary process. What mm -hmm. is that called? The phrase. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. The process of evolution is seen in the process of fertilization and maturation. I just kind of wanted to hear that again. Actually, I had, <laughs> I had a point. I had a point. <laughs> when we do this, we splice this DNA together. I mean, you can splice. You can make glowfish. You can take a little uh -huh. piece of the jellyfish and stick it into a regular fish. Transgenesis is really cool, too. That's where you take a gene out of one animal and stick it in another one. The purpose what of would that, be, would it be just because... Just to make the cool? six-year-olds happy? Are we going to have, like... Can we do it and make, like, There's a, ice a, in a miniature one? Oh, do you want to have them as pets? Yeah, 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 definitely. Why not any of that? Do, do we get, uh, uh, do, do big corporations get involved? We have, like, a pterodactyl or... Yeah, like, he, he actually joked about that. He said something about... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, tell Colonel Sanders there's an extra piece. Yeah. <laughs> right? Of society, you know? 
And as technology I'm and... I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time concentrating. I'm thinking about what a, a pterodactyl burger would taste like. Or a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are they eating the Flintstones? <laughs> Meat be like, uh, like poultry, you think? Like chicken. I eat things inside of my vodka. It looks like um, like bits and pieces of roof lid. Is that what's going on in this show? The roof Did someone use tap water for the ice? I'm sorry. So the, it's, it's not roof lid? I, I feel funny. Because <laughs> now I'm really disappointed. Oh, well, it is. Did you fill up the ice drink? You can't use tap water here, man. We live in Los Angeles. <laughs> you, every time you take a shower, you're in. You're do you swallow your shower? It, it permeates through your skin. <laughs> I know, but you're not. You're supposed to be exposed as little as possible to this stuff. <laughs> it is true. It is true. They sent yeah. us a letter when you move yeah. in. Is that true? Really? Yeah. When I first really moved true. to LA, they sent out a letter saying that eight years ago now, in West Hollywood, they sent out a letter saying that the uh, state of California has found that uh, if you drink more than eight glasses of tap water from Los Angeles County a day, it is known to cause cancer. Really? Jeez. Yeah. This, but this is eight years ago. And so it's eight maybe, glasses. Yeah, and it's so true. You have it's to not drink a lot. Like, yeah, you have to drink a lot, but we yeah. just avoid using the tap water. If but, you live in Los Angeles, do, you are, you are don't drink the tap water. water. This show is a, a science show, right? Yes. yes. So, you know what's weird? Speaking of science and, and uh, getting cancer from tap water, these days it seems like almost everything can give you cancer. Well, cancer you is in, not a in disease. Excess. Cancer is an inevitability. Right. If you live long enough, you will get cancer. It's an error in your genetic replication system. From, from what, back to my medical yeah. background, from what I understood is that cancer is uh, when a cell basically becomes immortal. Yeah, so like there's a lot of like steps where like they try to figure out how to make you immortal. And the, but it doesn't work out because it gives you cancer. It's like you can, you can go in, there's a, there's a, there's a clock inside your cells, like after maybe 30 times of replicating, your cells go, um, yeah, tell, tell, they tell, just die. tell tell them yours. Um, you can take that clock out and you can make it go just better than them, them continue on forever. But then you have a cluster of fucking cells that just doesn't stop growing, and you get mass and you die of a tumor. That's cancer. So immortality, yes, you can make it, you can make it happen, but it gives you cancer. And then you but what we find out, that's the whole idea about Aubrey Duguay, where he, he, he finds the... Gene therapy, his, I don't know if I like his idea so much, but basically he means to irradiate you and then remove the telomeres. His specific idea is irrelevant. His broad strokes... The broad strokes is, yeah, is right, is right on. We're going to talk about the other, the other TED Talk was not that, it was quantum, uh, the quantum object. It's all very, oh yeah, and you have the, yeah. It's all very 80s, sort of like, you know, like, metrosexual wannabe. Anyways, um... Actually, you know what, it wasn't, it wasn't that he was a bad speaker. It was that the audience, it, it felt like the audience was so, like, concentrating so hard, like, making sure they didn't miss anything, you know, as a guy, a PhD in quantum mechanics, you've yeah. you got to concentrate. Yeah. You know, so he told jokes, but it, it was like they didn't land. Yeah. You know, they didn't land. Man, he's so, not. He's not a speaker. I mean, I don't think he's. He's. He's having to become one. Now that it, he's but, discovered something that's worth talking about. Yeah, and he he has. Which is. is I think, we should probably tell what it is. It um, is a object so, that has a mechanical quantum quantum superposition. A macroscopic object that is in two places at once. Yeah, and it is a thing you can see with your naked eye that is also that's more, somewhere else. So can you touch it? Yes. In, in both places. Yeah, that I was wondering at too because that's that's incredible. Yeah, he wanted, and, and and what he what he concluded from it was also fascinating and beautiful. Well, let's just describe it a little bit more. Basically, it he went into a, a static like basically if you wanted to make a computer chip, you have to go in a static free room. He made this thing, this little compartment or whatever uh, to house. Uh, yeah, it's a little chunk of metal, and it's shaped like a diving board and sticking out over a ledge. We put it in vacuum and sucked out all the air, and then we cooled it down to just a fraction of a degree above absolute zero. We measured its motion, and we found it was moving in really weird ways. Instead of just sitting perfectly still, it was vibrating. And by giving it a gentle nudge, we were able to make it both vibrate and not vibrate at the same time, which in turn means the entire chunk of metal is in two different places. There's the all-pervasive you know, vacuum fluctuations, you know. But the I quantum fluctuations? That, like, you know, like the reason why um, the background radiation is at, you know, 
such uniformity has to do with you know like if it was if the big bang happened and there wasn't this uniformity like it, would, it should be there should be vast differences in the, the temperature but there's not so theory goes that there were was a uniformity hit before the expansion and that uniformity is still out there because it, it is it's very uniform the, the, the temperature when you like look from point A to point B in space it's like it's the same goddamn temperature so so what did you get out of that Cause I kinda... <laughs> my brain just melted <laughs> <laughs> alright whatever you explain it it was, it was vibrating and not vibrating yeah, yeah, I'll move on. So, All anyways, right. I'll just Carl Zimmer had a, a book. He's written a whole bunch of books, and he's really popular because he does uh, a lot of stuff yeah. for the white person. I haven't read it yet, and I'm planning on Planet of Viruses was his latest effort, and it was uh, really interesting. Last Friday viruses. had him on there. Uh, you have, you know, what like a trillion cells in your body, but then you have like 20 trillion viruses. So you're mostly viruses or bacteria or whatever. So that's incredible. That is incredible. But what was really interesting, and it was, I think, something that we all kind of should probably strive for, is uh, phages. Phages are viruses that attack bacteria, and there are like something like five viruses for every bacteria. The whole idea of going through this like antibiotics, you know, process that we've gone through, you know, worked mm -hmm. really well for a while, but we haven't made any new ones yet, and they don't evolve. Where in which viruses, phages that attack bacteria, you could have right now, there's probably five different ones that will attack MRSA, which is this, like highly resistant to um, antibiotics, bacterial infection, you know, you get a lot in hospitals. And if only we were, you know, I think Russia still does it, but if we had the FDA backing uh, research in order to implement these phages, we could pretty much eradicate all bacterial infection. Wow. How far is Russia along in this? I don't. Apparently, not, I mean, where where Russia? Because we crush them. In the, in the kind of crush. No, I don't know. USA is number one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck you, diseases. <laughs> you know, I've had like a lot. When you start off with USA as number one, you don't have to mix. It. You don't. <laughs> foreign pussy. Census for foreigners. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, France. Science. Science. Also. You can't chew gum and do a. Talk show? Science, science don't be, doesn't believe in anything. Yeah, I don't know about no, that. That's, <laughs> that's an interesting topic. I, science does is a matter of faith. It's a matter of faith in the scientific method. It's a, faith in reason. You know? We have religion is reason through faith. But science is faith through reason. Does that make sense? Science. Something happens, we see it, we interpret it, or it's repeatable. Faith something does or doesn't happen, you know, because time has passed, a story has been made, and faith has been created after that story, you know, and then it could have mutated many times down the line because it's not based on any kind of repeatable thing. One more time. Again, I have drank so much. It's <laughs> <laughs> bottle, nothing I'm bottle makes noise it. when dropped. I see it. I can do it again. Faith, bottle makes noise, bottle makes no noise, and I drop tell you that. Yeah. And you believe me because I said so. And there's no repeating of it because I said so. Just believe it. They're not the mutually line. exclusive. You can't say that our perception is infallible. No, our perception has definitely got probably foul in it. And the scientific method must have inherent flaws. I mean, it like doesn't if we, matter if it repeats to our perception, which has flaws. I mean, there's so much unknowableness, you know. Definitely, there's intractability, there's uncertainty. There's the there's fact that the universe is expanding, and there are stars that we can't. They're like at some point the the universe will look dark to us because the stars will be so far away we won't be able to see any of the light so it'll we'll look out there and know and people this it, is it, this is too the, long for six minutes it's let's close it out then There's one minute on christopher roosevelt <laughs> christopher roosevelt future a-lister and you uh, we would like you to come back i'm sorry we got into this weird like uh, you it's know, like, science, yeah. which is weird. always cripplingly weird. wrong against, weird. uh, it's I weird. Just, it's weird. Weird? <laughs> Nobody here that is weird. <laughs> I just started zoning out while you guys were That's just right. like... I gotta pee, like, somebody... Banging it out and just... <laughs> fighting soon. Chris <laughs> yelling! Chris <laughs> yelling! <laughs> and feed. not hate the show too much, these bitches. Committed a heinous murder. What are we talking about? This show is a, a science show, right? <laughs>